Hey, welcome back. This lesson is designed primarily for physics or AP physics type classes about how to think about two-dimensional kinematics problems, including, in this case, a horizontally launched projectile example problem. So we'll do the easiest type of projectile problem. And I do want to recap where we have been. I've talked about the head to tail method of vector addition, vector subtraction. That's going to become important for our next lesson, which is how to do problems with a projectile that's launched at an angle. I did just do a lesson on, a short lesson, on introducing two-dimensional kinematics ideas through a simulation, so I'll put a link up to these things in the upper right as I talk. And this lesson is going to be about two-dimensional kinematic equations and a horizontally launched projectile example problem. So this is training for physics type classes about how you can think through and solve these problems successfully. All right, let's go ahead and give it a shot. First of all, I do want to point out that if you do have a projectile, it has a parabolic path. And we did talk in our last screencast about how like if you pick one of these water particles as it moves through the air, essentially its velocity in the x-axis is gonna be constant as it moves. And in the y-axis, it's gonna be changing constantly as it goes up and it goes down in the y. What that means is there's zero acceleration in the x-axis and there is a negative acceleration in the y-axis. The negative value here on Earth is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. That means every second, something that is launched into the air, that's a projectile. A projectile is just something that has just gravity affecting it. A projectile is going to be accelerating every second. Its velocity is going to change by a negative 9.81 meters per second every second in the y-axis. And that's what we mean by that acceleration. One of the other important ideas we talked about is what's happening in the X is independent of what happens in the Y. These water particles are going to move down to the Earth. Whether or not they're shot or moving in the X axis or not, they're still going to be falling down at the same rate. All right, so let's take a look at the formal strategies for this. So I've modified the five simple steps I gave you before for one-dimensional kinematics problems with some, some additions because inherently dealing with a two-dimensional problem is a little bit tougher than dealing with a one-dimensional problem. So any of the new concepts are in bold, and I want to emphasize those. We are going to separate our work into the x-axis and the y-axis, as they are independent of each other. So like the acceleration the x usually for projectile problems is going to be zero, unless there's some sort of air resistance involved there. And in the y, usually it's going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared because of gravitational acceleration. You are going to need to draw a quick diagram, and this is something really important to do for a kinematic situation. It doesn't have to be a super detailed drawing. In fact, you can make stick figures or dots to represent things. And this is important. Normally, for a one-dimensional kinematics problem, I would say just look for the thing that you are ignoring in the problem. We've talked about that. Look for the concept, the physics concept, like initial velocity, final velocity, that kind of thing. Look for the thing that is being ignored and use the equation that does that, because there are three or four kinematics equations we can use. I'm going to modify that here. While that is still a very important strategy to have in our back pocket, we may need to go to that nine times out of ten or even more. You're actually just going to start with these two equations over here. These are both kinematic equations, and this is the x version, and this is the y version over here. The next thing I want you to be aware of is please write check marks by what you know and question marks by what you don't know. And try to solve for the time, which will be the same in both axes. So like our initial velocity in the x is not the same as our initial velocity in the y. In fact, none of these variables here are going to be the same except for time. Time is going to be the same in the x-axis and the y-axis, or at least most likely none of these variables will be at the same value except for time, which is essentially by definition going to be the same in the x and the y-axis. So if you can solve for time, usually you're going to solve for time in the y, and then apply that time over here in the x. The check marks and question mark things is something I've been doing for years. It seems to help students. I think you should do this. Some people will listen to me and some people will not, and it's totally up to you. But if you listen, even if you're a smart person, if you listen, your chances of making a little mistake that throw off your entire problem go down. All right, so next up, you're going to isolate your equation for your unknown before plugging in numbers. And towards the very end, you're going to be plugging in numbers with units and solving. Note numbers go on at the end. Don't start with the wall of math. Okay, so let's go ahead and give a problem a try. So this is a horizontally launched projectile problem example. This is the easiest type of projectile problem to do. 
If you get confused by the words horizontal or vertical, just remember the word horizontal is like you're familiar with the horizon, that line where the sky meets the land as you look off from the distance, right? And that can help you to remember what we mean by a horizontal situation. So if we're talking about a horizontally launched projectile, we're talking about something launched off a cliff or dropped out of an airplane, something like that. So this problem says the movie director is shooting a scene and wants to drop a stunt dummy out of an airplane into a swimming pool. The plane is 10 meters above the ground, traveling at a velocity of 22.5 meters per second in the positive x direction. The director wants to know how far in front of the pool the stunt dummy should be dropped to land in the pool. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've drawn this badly. But you may be looking at that going, hey, that's a fair amount of work. I don't even want to do that much. I get that, that it's fine. Just represent your object by a dot. If you don't want to draw a stick figure of a plane or a bad looking plane like I have, just represent your object by a dot. In fact, when we get into forces, we're going to be doing free body diagrams where that is traditionally what is done. You represent your object with a dot. But notice I've put all of the information on here that I know with the exception of the acceleration due to gravity. And so I can kind of summarize this with this diagram. And my next step is going to be to write down the items in terms of the variables we have talked about. So I've gone ahead and done that here. Notice I'm using like sub y and sub x. This is initial in the x because what happens in the x and the y axis are independent of each other. Now in the interest of space, I need to go to another slide and we're going to start this problem. And what I would do is I would start by writing that third kinematics equation out. And the general strategy is to work the x-axis. Normally you get stuck. You come over here and you work with the y and you're going to solve for time. And then you're going to plug that back into the x. And let me show you what I mean by that. First of all, we're going to say our initial position is zero on the x-axis. And our final position we don't know because we don't know what our delta x is. In fact, if I were to bring this over, you could think of this as a delta x on the left side. We just simply don't know how far ahead the swimming pool should be placed. And that's what we're trying to solve for. So this we can mark as a zero. That means that term drops. This I can write a check mark by because we know what our initial velocity in the x is. That's how fast the plane is going. In terms of our time, we don't know that. In terms of our acceleration, we do know. And this is going to be true for almost all projectile problems that you see. Your acceleration in the x is going to be zero. Unless you're working with AP and you're talking about drag forces, this is going to end up being zero. What that means is this entire term gets eliminated. And so we can go ahead and draw a line through that. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. I'm going to get rid of my zero terms. And note that I'm left with this. At this point, I'm stuck because I still have two variables. But that is OK. We're now going to move on to the right side and deal with the y-axis. All right, so let's think about what we know and what we don't know. This part is a little tricky for students. It depends on their diagram. If they make zero the initial in the y-axis at the airplane, then this y-final would automatically be minus 10 meters, right? And on the other hand, if we make this y-final zero, this y-initial would be 10. But to bring it over, we would have to subtract it over. We would have 0 minus 10. We end up with a delta y over here on the left-hand side of minus 10 either way. Either way, you write this out. And it's a subtle point, and some people get tripped up by that. If you want to re-listen to that, go for it. But either way, you figure out what your, your delta y is going to end up being minus 10 over here. Delta being final minus initial. All right. So fair enough, we can say, let's just go ahead and we can call this our zero point. I think that's the way most people would do the problem where they would say like the ground is going to be considered to be zero. This is going to be a positive 10. When we bring it over, it'll become negative 10. If we look at this over here, our initial velocity in the Y is zero. Why is that? It's not launched at an angle, it's simply dropped. That's really, really crucial. It's dropped, and what that means is, since it has no initial velocity in the y, that whole term, we can write a line through it, suggesting it'll be dropped, and it will. And we do know what our acceleration in the y is going to be. Again, that's gravitational acceleration, so that's minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's clean this up a little bit and see what we're left with and think about what we need. We need time over here because if we can get time, that's going to be the same as this time over here. So we just do a little bit of algebraic simplifying and then we can go ahead and plug in our numbers and we end up with 1.43 seconds. If I went a little too fast there, just pause for a moment and look at my algebra. 
All right, and then based on that, we can take that time and plug in and over here for the x-axis, and then we plug in our values. I have to show some work over on top of some of the work because I'm running out of room, but we end up with an answer of 32.2 meters. That's how far in front of the swimming pool the plane needs to drop the stunt dummy. All right, and that's how to do your first projectile problem. If you understood that, pat yourself on the back. It's not easy to learn how to do physics, but you can do this. And as long as you take things step by step by step and just focus on little pieces at a time and follow these strategies I'm going over with you, like actually write out checks and question marks and actually write in your units at the end when you are plugging in numbers, as long as you actually put that into practice, you're going to be totally fine and be very successful in physics. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have a comment, please throw one down below. I will do my next lesson on a harder type of projectile problem, which is a projectile that's launched at an angle, but we're going to be building on these same concepts and using the same concepts just with a little bit harder problem. So thanks for listening. Have a great day.